Over the past week or so, Kathy Wood has picked up well over a million shares of Palantir in her different ARK ETFs, and I've seen a bunch of content on YouTube as well as on other websites suggesting that this is a big deal and a huge bullish indicator. But in this video, I'm going to tell you why Kathy Wood picking up a million shares of Palantir here or there doesn't mean jag sh** in the grand scheme of things. It seems like every time she moves her pinky finger, it's newsworthy, but realistically speaking, it doesn't affect the fundamentals of the company and it doesn't necessarily mean that Palantir stock is going to go higher or lower. Let me illustrate the point in a couple of different ways. So first of all, let's look at the ARK ETF's combined holdings of Palantir. And you can see as I scroll down here that it's weighted at 2% of all of the ARK investment portfolios. In fact, its weighted rank across all of the ARK ETFs is only 16, meaning it's the 16th largest position that Kathy Wood has taken in any individual stock when you compare all of the different ETFs that they manage. Also, if we look at the flow of Palantir shares into or out of Kathy Wood's ETFs over the past few weeks, you can see that it's actually pretty much achieving a balance because at the end of December, they sold over 2 million shares of Palantir across ARK-K and ARK-W, and in the first week or two of January, they've added approximately the same amount. So it's not even as if over the past few weeks, Kathy Wood has dramatically increased her position size in Palantir. More so, it looks like the ETFs were just doing some rebalancing at the end of last year, probably for tax purposes or paying out to shareholders. And now they're trying to reinitiate some of these positions. It's just a balancing act with these ETFs. Also, when it comes to institutional ownership of Palantir, let's look at who actually owns the most. And if we look at this chart here of the top 10 owners of Palantir Technologies Incorporated, you can see that Vanguard Group and BlackRock are way more heavily invested in Palantir than ARK Invest, which comes in at number three with around 1.95% of Palantir's total float. But Vanguard and BlackRock combined are accounting for almost 10%. Vanguard alone has 115 million shares of Palantir and ARK has combined only 37 million. But it's not as if every time Vanguard adds more Palantir to one of its investment products, you're seeing news stories. In fact, what's even more interesting is this final column here, total change, where you can see which institutions are actually loading up more heavily relative to their previous position sizes. And you can see that ARK is only at 21%, but BlackRock is up 52%, SSGA funds is up almost 60%, and you've got some other ones here that have really been loading up on Palantir shares relative to their previous holding. In fact, of this top 10 list, ARK is coming in second to last in terms of adding additional shares proportionally of Palantir to the books. As one final point, I just want to highlight that Palantir's total float, the number of shares outstanding, is almost 2 billion, 1.91 billion. But as we see, ARK Invest is holding around 37 million. Now, I'm not sure if this figure accounts for the recent few trades, but regardless, we're talking about less than 40 million shares in ARK's portfolio compared to a 2 billion total flow. The point that I'm trying to make is that the recent purchases of ARK Invest and Kathy Wood is really just a drop in a bucket. Now, if she increased her position size significantly, sure, that could be interesting. But buying and selling a few hundred thousand shares here or there doesn't really matter. I mean, insofar as Kathy Wood is a legendary investor, sure, okay, it might be interesting. But unless you're basing your entire investment strategy off of what Kathy Wood is doing today, then honestly, it doesn't mean jack. It's just hype and noise. And Kathy Wood and her funds have bought and sold shares of Palantir and many other companies for many different reasons, which we don't actually know. In my opinion, proper due diligence should be more based on the fundamentals of the business. Are they going out and acquiring new customers? Are they growing their revenue? Are they investing in R&D? Are there emerging opportunities that they can take advantage of? But maybe that's just me. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, you might also like this one. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you later.